Hi there, welcome back to my channel. And for those of you who are new here, my name's Amy. I'm a full-time reseller, primarily on the Poshmark app, but I also dabble in other online platforms and I sell locally. Today, I'll be doing a ship with me video. In these videos, I go day to day and I talk about the items that I sold. I talk about how much they sold for, what I paid for them and what my profit is. So you wanna be sure to watch all the way to the end because I always have unique items and I'm sure you'll learn something from seeing the different types of items I pick up. So let's get started. The first item is this Stetson fedora hat. And for those of you who watch my videos, this may look familiar because I have sold it before. The buyer ended up returning it because it had this little mark on the back underside of the brim. I don't know if that's actually why he returned it or if it didn't fit, but uh, I missed that mark originally, so I happily accepted the return because it was my error. The first time it sold for $60, and this time it sold for $85. So all's well that is en that ends well. And, uh, you know, I will be the first to admit when I make an error, and I will happily accept a return when it is my error. Uh, when I don't make an error, typically I don't accept returns. Uh, that's just how... Uh, I do, you know, I run my business. I try and be as descriptive as possible in my listings uh, to prevent returns. But, you know, sometimes they, they happen. And when they do, I try not to let it get me down because oftentimes the item will sell for more the second time. So that's great. Okay, so this sold for $85, like I said. I had paid up for this. I paid $20 at the Goodwill for it, uh, mainly just because it was Stetson. I am going to stuff that so that hopefully it doesn't get crushed in transit. So I am not very knowledgeable about hats in general. I just thought this was a cool looking piece and I kind of took a risk paying that $20 for it, uh, but I knew that Stetson typically has a high retail value. So I thought it was worth the risk and it does did turn out that it was because after posh fees and my cost of goods that made my profit $45 and 32 cents. I'm happy with that. And this sold somewhat quickly the second time uh, that I relisted it. So I think maybe three weeks or a month it took to sell. So for those of you who haven't watched my videos, these plastic sheets are uh, garment bags like the dry cleaners use. They're the long ones. I just cut them in half and use them to wrap my items. Uh, I picked mine up at an estate sale, but you can probably find some uh, on Amazon just by searching plastic garment bag roll. Uh, I put dry cleaner in there too. And, um, you know, so I think it, it works out good. I also use these little holographic uh, thank you stickers from Amazon. Okay, for this, I am going to use the, um, actually not that one. I'm going to use the regional rate box B because it's just about the perfect size for this hat. And we can use those with Poshmark no matter where they are going. I have used them quite a few times without issue. Okay, so the next item that sold is this beautiful vintage cashmere wrap coat. And I picked this up at an estate sale. It is a midi length and it is a wrap style. It has this beautiful stitching detail on the collar. The lining is beautiful. I was at an estate sale and all of the clothes were $5. There is the tag. There is no brand name on this. So I just listed it under the vintage brand on Poshmark. So like I was saying, I was at an estate sale, all the clothes were $5, and a few other resellers had already been through this closet 
and they didn't get this. I don't know why. I just grabbed it because it was a wrap coat and I have done well with vintage wrap coats in the past. And then when I got home and looked it over, also when I touched it, I could tell that it was expensive. And when I got home and looked it over, I saw that 100% cashmere tag and I was like, wow, I'm so excited. So uh, always re-look through closets when you're at estate sales, even if you've seen other resellers in there because they may be looking for different types of items. So this sold for $160. I'm so excited. I had it listed for $189. Like I said, I paid $5 for it. So after, let's see if we can get a better look of that. After posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $123. You guys know I love a big profit. I think I'm gonna finish, uh, folding this up off and wrapping it up off camera just so I can get it to uh, look a little bit neater. But I'm very excited about that. I do think that took about a month and a half to sell. And of course I put keywords like vintage, 100% cashmere, luxury, uh, wrap coat. I put the era, I thought it was from the 1960s. So all those different things really help uh, get eyes on your items when they're vintage. Okay, so the next item that sold is this Carhartt hooded insulated coat. Now, I hesitated on this a little bit because it has this sewn on FFA patch and it also had this stain on the pocket but it was only $4 at the thrift store. This was in a little small town rural thrift store. My, my Goodwills really mark up Carhartt, so you wouldn't see that in the Goodwill. But I decided to pick it up anyways because it was $4, and I just thought there's no way I can't make a profit, some sort of profit on this for that price. So after I picked it up, I looked up comps with this FFA patch and apparently they make them and sell them like that. So it still had pretty decent comps. I think I listed this for $95. I don't remember for sure, but it sold for 80. So that is wonderful. More, quite a bit more than I expected. So, and it was a men's extra large, if I didn't mention that. So it sold for $80. I paid $4. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $60. Another nice solid profit. If you haven't watched my videos before, I talk a lot about uh, trying to make bigger profits on each item instead of selling multiple small items or for lower profits. And of course, you know, I do this because I'm able to find this type of item in my area. Some of you may not have the same access that I do and uh, going to the bins and getting low dollar items and selling them for 20, 25, $30 works better in your area. I don't have a bins in my town, it's about an hour away. So I have to focus on doing this and I enjoy doing this doing my business this way. So, okay, the next item is this Pendleton wool men's shirt. And this is a reproduction. It said limited edition. What does it say? This shirt is a revival of the Pendleton plaid shirt worn by the Beach Boys on their early album covers. So I put all of those key, you know, Beach Boys, limited edition. I think I put vintage style in there, plaid, 100% wool, of course. And this is kind of an interesting deal, how I came about getting this shirt. So uh, when I used to work in banking, 
I had a dry cleaner as a customer. And so I, I helped him for years and years, actually, with his deposits. And one day I went in to get some dry cleaning done and I was he was asking if I was still at the bank and I said, no, I haven't been there for over 10 years. And I started telling him what I was doing. And he was really interested. And he said, hey, we have some pieces of clothing that people dropped off to get cleaned and then never came and picked up. Would you be interested in selling them for us? And I said, yeah, let me, you know, I'd love to take a look at what you have. And the first round of items that they gave me was like 15 pieces of Eileen Fisher, uh, which was wonderful. A vintage coat, a couple other coats. So I was really excited. I do a 50-50 split with them after Poshmark fees. And I've pretty much sold all of the stuff from the first round. And this is the second round of items. So um, I listed this for $65 because it did have a couple little flaws uh, to the wool and a buyer offered me 50. I thought it was more than fair. I'd only had this listed for maybe like a week and a half. So that was great. Uh, that made my, because it's a 50-50 split, that made my cost of goods 20 and my profit 20. So I am very happy with that and you know, that just goes to show that you should always talk about what you do so that you can make connections and hopefully get free inventory or inventory that has no initial, um, you know, money put into it. I don't know what their deal is with their customers. I know that they try and contact them. The, um, the first grouping of items the woman unfortunately passed away and when they called the people said she's passed away we don't want the items so um you know i let that be their business and they'll have to deal with their customer if there is an issue um, but i also have a consignment contract with them okay enough about that but i just thought you guys might think that was kind of an interesting way to get inventory okay the next item is this semi-vintage western pearl snap shirt and this has this embroidery and the pearl snaps that is a key word you want to use for this type of shirt this is plains western wear size large and i picked this up at an estate sale uh, mainly because i liked the embroidery and it was only a dollar I did get two, two or three other of this type of shirt with different motifs on there. Sorry, I just noticed this had picked up some lint on there. Um, but those had already sold. I can't remember what I sold them for, but I think in the same 30-ish dollar range. So this one sold for $28. I had paid just a dollar for it, like I said, at an estate sale. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $21.40. That makes me really happy. Pretty easy to list and ship. Now this did take, this did take a little while to sell, maybe three or four months. But as I've said before, you know, with vintage items, sometimes it does take a little bit longer to sell and it's just up to each individual seller how they want to, you know, kind of operate their, their business. If they're willing to uh, have things take a little bit longer to sell. Okay, and I had another exciting sale over the weekend on Cherish. And it was a vintage, uh, I think Drexel Heritage was the brand name, campaign style dry bar. So it's a smaller size credenza and then it has um, two pieces that fold out and on the underside they have like uh, 
laminate or formica so that you can open it up when you're entertaining and mix your drinks on there and whatnot. So I was pretty excited about that. I had that listed for $625 and a buyer offered me $563. It had been listed for quite some time, maybe even close to a year. Uh, I had paid $75 for it at an estate sale. So after Cherish fees, they charge, I think they just increased their commission to 22%. So they charge 22%. So after that fee and my cost of goods, that made my profit $364.14. I am very happy with that. Um, you know, I am able to do that sort of thing because I have this uh, building to work out of. Uh, if you're curious what the things behind me uh, are and you haven't watched that video yet, I will link the video, the About Me video. It also does a, a shop tour so you can kind of see where I work out of. Okay, and I'll go ahead and add a little clip uh, after this showing that bar so you can see what it sold for and I'll try and add some more uh, keywords in that video so you know uh, you can get an idea of what I listed it as. Okay, well that's all for today, but I will be back in a couple of days to share what else I ship out. I'll see you then. Hi there, it's another day and I've got some more goodies to ship out. I have some good news and I have some bad news. The good news is I have quite a few sales going out today. The bad news is the buyer for that Credenza dry bar canceled their order. So that is a big hit. I would have made, what did I have? $364 profit on that item. So I'm pretty disappointed, but uh, sometimes that does happen especially with large furniture items. So on Cherish, uh, they arrange the shipping through U-Ship and you are kind of at the mercy of the U-Ship driver. So the buyer for this order lived in Florida and I live in Washington. So that is a long ways away and it's winter. So I think the buyer probably wanted to get it by Christmas and they called in and talked to Cherish and Cherish said, uh, there's probably is probably not going to get to you by Christmas. Usually it takes like three to eight weeks for furniture to be delivered. So anyways, that's kind of disappointing, but it happens sometimes and I've just got it relisted. So ho hopefully someone else finds it and buys it for more. Okay, so let's get started with my Poshmark sales. The first item that sold is this leather Western belt and it is by Nakona. Now, this is really a cool piece, and I had hoped that it would sell for more, but it was missing one of these little conch details right there. And I had had it listed for a while with no bites. I mean, maybe four or five months. So when this buyer offered me $25, I decided to go ahead and accept just because I was ready to uh, move it out and I had only paid $2 for it. So you'll notice that there's a few items. Sorry about that, I'm not sure what happened. My camera just turned off. I may have run out of memory, I'm not sure, but uh, what I was saying is that you may notice that there's a few items uh, that I'm shipping out today that I'll say that uh, sold for less than I anticipated. During this time of year, you know, towards the end of December, I tend to accept more offers just because I find that selling used items this time of year can be more difficult. I know a lot of resellers talk about fourth quarter being their best quarter, but that's not always true for me. Usually first quarter is my best quarter. So comment down below and let me know uh, what quarter is best for you or if fourth quarter is good. Pardon me if I'm repeating myself. I'm not sure when exactly when my uh, camera shut off. So I had to unwrap some things and now I'm gonna talk about them and rewrap them. So the next item that sold is this really cute Wilson's leather suede jacket. And I used keywords like genuine leather suede, uh, faux Sherpa, faux shearling, faux fur, aviator, 
vintage 90s Y2K. And this sold in less than two days. It did sell for a little bit less than I had originally hoped it would sell for, but uh, because it was a coat, I'm trying to avoid keeping too many coats on hand through the summer again, because I'm discovering through doing these videos that it is pretty important uh, or when you list an item for seasonality, it can be pretty important. So sometimes, you know, coats will sell in the summer, but most of the time they don't. And my coat racks are full to the brim. So I want to be moving out these different coats when it is still cold out and people are buying them. So I originally listed this for $89 and I had sent out a few 10% off offers and this buyer offered me $60. I kind of hem hawed about it. I did send her a message asking if she could come up a little bit and she said no. So I just decided to go ahead and accept. Sometimes a quick flip is great. So I paid $11 for this at the Goodwill. Uh, so after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $37. Still a great profit for a quick flip. I'm not gonna complain about that at all. And it was such a cute piece. Okay, so the next item is another coat. And this is an example of this being listed at the wrong time. I listed this in January or February. So it has been sitting on my coat rack for almost a year. It does have kind of a cool geometric Aztec print and the brand is Action 2. I didn't list, is this? Oh, I'm sorry, I thought my camera stopped recording again. Okay, I didn't list this under that brand on Poshmark. I listed it under the Vintage brand, which for those of you who watch my videos, I've talked about that before. But for those of you who are new, there is just under the list of brands, if you type in vintage, there's an actual brand section and people will follow that brand just like they would follow Patagonia or Gucci or Free People. And so it can help give your item exposure if it is a vintage item. Okay, so I think maybe one of the other problems for this coat is I think I listed it too high to begin with. I listed it for like $79 or $89. This buyer offered me $45, which was a little bit less than I was hoping to get, but clearly I wasn't gonna get that high price that I originally thought I was because it had been sitting for almost a year. I'm sorry I'm struggling with this, it's kind of a, big piece and I'm trying to get it in here. So I accepted that $45. I had paid $10 for this at the Goodwill. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $26. Not really what I had in mind for paying up $10 and for this taking so long to sell. But you know, you gotta take the good with the bad and some things don't sell for what you originally thought they would. Okay, and I was ready to get that, get that out. So the next item is a bundle of two jewelry pieces. And the first item is this, let's see, little band ring with kind of a rope woven motif. It is sterling silver. And then the next is this pair of earrings. I'm just gonna show you one. They are sterling silver ball earrings. And I think they're by the brand Taxco. I purchased them uh, from an estate sale with quite a few other Taxco pieces. And I can't remember what I originally listed these two items for, but the bundle sold for $53. The buyer made me that offer and it was, about a 20% off discount, maybe a little bit more. 
And I'm pretty sure that this buyer has shopped with me before and I think she's actually a subscriber. So Stephanie, if you're watching, I really appreciate your business. Thank you so much for shopping with me and watching my videos. It really helps me out when you guys keep watching my videos and when you buy from my closet. I'm just a regular gal trying to, you know, make a living and I have really been humbled and I'm so thankful for, uh, you know, the subscribers that I do have and those of you who have shopped my Poshmark closet. So thank you again. I'm going to go ahead and wrap this in one of these cute little boxes I get at the dollar store and add a little ribbon just for a little happiness. Okay, and did I say, I don't think I did. So I paid $3 for the earrings and $2 for the ring at an estate sale. So after Posh Fees and My Cost of Goods, that made my profit $37.40. I'm happy with that, I'm not gonna complain. The next item is this cute pair of sterling silver fish earrings. Can you see those? And these are in fact stamped Mexico 925. So I believe these are also by Taxco. And I will tell you, these have been listed forever. I think over two years. I don't know why they took so long to sell. I thought they were really cute. Maybe I originally had them listed too high, but this buyer offered me $20 right before I was leaving to come make this video and ship the items. And I said, yes, take them off my hands. I am ready for someone to them enjoy them and get them out of the storage box that they were in. So I had gotten these for free. Uh, my mom's cousin sent a bunch of items to us when she cleaned out her jewelry box. She is, her and her husband are quite successful developers. And so sometimes she would give us stuff uh, to sell. Sometimes she'd want money, sometimes she wouldn't, but these we got for free. So after Poshmark fees, that made my profit $16. Again, I'm really surprised that these took so long to sell, but they are out of here and I hope the buyer loves them because I thought they were really cute. Okay, so the next item that sold is this pair of Ugg boots. And they're kind of a woven sweater material and then they have Sherpa lining down inside and they're the ones that you can fold over or wear tall. These had been listed for a little while uh, because I bought them at the beginning of summer and they're clearly not really a summer boot but they ended up being a full price sale. I always think that's interesting when something's been listed for a little while and then it ends up selling full price. So these sold for $49. They did have a little bit of pilling on them. Is that how you say it? Do you say pilling or piling? It's pilling, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I get my words mixed up. So did I say they sold for $49? That made me really happy. I paid $5 for them. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $34.20. That's pretty much in line with what I expected to get with these. So that makes me happy. I'll get them packaged up all nice. Let's see, how am I going to put these in there like that? So I think I'll put the thank you. I always like to have the thank you sticker sticking up. So when they open the box, it looks, it looks nice like that and they can see the thank you sticker. Okay, sorry, I'm a little discombobulated now that my camera turned off and I keep checking to make sure it's going and it is. Okay, 
So the next item, I'm sure there's gonna be some of you that say I sold these too cheaply, um, but these are a Bayo, can you see in there? They're comfort boots. They were in excellent, almost like new condition, but I could not for the life of me find a size mark on these. Also, apparently there's a couple of different support types for these boots and it didn't say what they were. So I put in the description what size I thought they were and I put measurements. I can't remember what I originally listed these for, but they sold for $39 or $33. So I do know that, let's see, struggling here again. I do know that these can sell for more than this, uh, but because they had a few different things going against them, I decided to go ahead and accept that $33 and ship them out. I had picked them up at the bins and I paid less than $2 for them. So I still made a decent profit of $24.40. And really they hadn't been listed terribly long. Maybe around a month, maybe a little less. So sometimes with these items that, you know, I'm unsure of details on, I am more likely to accept a lower offer to move them out and get something else in. Now I do risk a return on these because the size wasn't marked, uh, but that's just something I'll have to deal with. I didn't know, or I didn't notice when I picked them up the bins that there was no size mark. So hopefully these fit and the person could compare them to another pair that they already have or something. So. Okay, well that's all for today, but I will be back in a couple of days and hopefully things continue to be busy and I have more sales, so I'll see you then. Hi again, it's a couple days later and it's been a really great few days. I have quite a few sales to ship out and some high dollar items that sold quick. So all of those things are really great. That makes me happy. It is super windy outside, so I apologize if you can hear any of that. Uh, we've had gusts for the like last 48 hours. Uh, it's kind of wild, but let's get started. So the first item is this really puffy vintage wool rich coat. It is goose down. So I'll show you try and show you the tag first get a little closer I believe this is from the 1980s uh, could possibly be a little older or a little newer but it is a giant very poofy coat I picked this up at the Goodwill about a week and a half to two weeks ago I went in there and it seemed like they were starting to to really get into putting out all of their coats. And I ended up buying, I don't know, four or five coats. And I think I spent almost a hundred dollars because they did have uh, a lot of the coats marked up. So I paid up for this. I paid $13. Can you see me? <laughs> It is, this is super poofy. I mean, this is like for Alaska winters. So I paid $13 and I'm learning that I need to have my coats listed as early in winter as possible to get them sold. So I listed it right away uh, because I am a procrastinator. A lot of times I don't get things listed super quickly. And I listed this for $129. I was kind of shooting from the hip on this. I had seen other comps on eBay uh, listed, not sold comps, of these goose down parkas in the $100 to $150 range. Uh, did I already say they had like a fur trim? on the collar and this one did not. 
So I listed it for 129 and this buyer came in, <coughs> excuse me, and offered me 70 and then immediately canceled it. And then a couple days later came back and started off by offering me like 35 or 40 or something. And originally I was contemplating accepting his $70 offer, but then he uh, canceled it. So we went back and forth, I mean, probably 10 times and he came back up to 70 finally. So I decided to accept that from him. Now it's possible that I could have gotten a little bit more for this, but this takes up a lot of space. Uh, it is December, so I want to really keep my coats moving out. So I decided to take a little bit lower offer on this and it still left me with a great profit. So after Poshmark fees and my cost of goods, I made $43. And this only took about a week, maybe a tiny bit more to sell. So I think $43 for a quick sale is great. And I had paid up a little bit for that. So uh, if I could turn and burn it, that would be great. So the same day, I also got this coat. And this is a, I believe it's wool. It feels like wool. It's Wyoming Traders. And it has a leather collar. I got this the same day and I paid up even more. I paid $20 for this. But I took a quick look at comps at um, while I was at the Goodwill. And I saw comps in the... Let's see, I think 80 to $150 range because they do, this company is still in business, but this looked more like a vintage piece from them. When I say vintage, I mean like 20, 30 years old. So I listed it for 149 and this buyer offered me $120. Uh, so I, I accepted that really quick. I'd only had it listed for a week, so I was super happy to turn and burn that. The other reason that I picked this up is because it had a Western look to it. Uh, it was quality with the wool and the leather. And with uh, Yellowstone being such a popular TV show, I am really loving picking up Western items. People really seem to be getting into that kind of styling. And I typically do well with nice quality Western style items. So, you know, I used all the keywords for the fabrics, including wool and leather. I put Yellowstone, I put ranch, rancher, cowboy, Western, Southwest. Um, I think that's it. So when you're listing these types of items, I think keywords can really help out. I think Wyoming Traders is a good brand. So this buyer, for all I know, could have been searching specifically for Wyoming Traders, but he could also have been searching for, you know, Yellowstone wool coat or cowboy style coat. So I try and put as many keywords in as possible so it helps people find the items. Okay, blah, blah, blah. So I paid $20 for this. It sold for $120. So after Poshmark fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $76. Yes, I love that. Love having a quick high profit. The next item is the polar opposite of that, but we can't know everything about everything or, you know, make tons of money on everything. This is kind of a thin vintage belt, and I don't know if you can see that, but it's a Levi's Strauss buckle. I bought this a while ago, and it, it, it was listed for quite some time, maybe over a year. I thought it was really a cute little piece, so I'm not sure why it took so long to sell, but I had it listed for $35 and the buyer offered me 11 or 12, I think. And 
I added the item to a bundle and asked if he could come up to $16 because I wanted to keep that offer open in case he said no because I wanted to sell this. So I may have considered accepting that lower offer. So I asked him if he would come up to 16 and he responded and said, would you take 15? And so I sent him a counter offer and he seemed pretty excited to be getting the belt. So that is great. So I had paid just a dollar for this at an estate sale. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $11. Not my best profit, um, but as you guys who watch normally have heard, I, you know, buy belts as a bread and butter item. So sometimes I am willing to take lower offers to move them in and out quickly. Okay, so the next item is a fun set. So this is a vintage lingerie set and it comes with this really sweet little ruffled nighty or slip. I really think it's meant to be a nightgown. And let's see, I'm going to show you, find the tag. So this is by Nan Flower. And I believe that this is from the 1950s. I picked this up at an estate sale for just a dollar for the set. I like picking up these vintage lingerie pieces. They aren't always a quick seller, so I do not like to pay up for them. But you can get some decent prices for certain ones if you're willing to wait or certain brands. I'm not an expert, but you could definitely look at comps, sold comps on eBay to get some ideas of what brands are better and what eras are better. So it also came with this sheer over jacket. And if you've watched Mrs. Maisel, she wears these sets in that show from the 1950s. And I suppose that might be what kind of inspired me to uh, start picking these up. So I had listed this for $129, which I'll admit I think is a pretty aggressive price. But to find these, with the set still together and in decent condition and they're over 70 years old, I think, you know, I think that adds some value for sure. I had had it listed for, I think three or four months. Oh no, that's, no, I hadn't. It only been listed for maybe a month or a month and a half. And right after I listed it, this buyer came in and asked if I would take she asked if I would take 60 and I said no because I had just listed it and then a couple weeks later she came back and asked if I would take 80 and I said yes and then she, then she came back and said oh I didn't realize I would have to pay shipping will you do 80 with free shipping and then I was a little perturbed um, not, you know, not a big deal, but when somebody makes you a verbal offer and you accept and then they try and get even cheaper, you know what I mean? It's just kind of like, eh. uh, so I said, no, I said, I've already come down $49. Um, you know, the shipping will be $7 and then a week later, sorry, this is such a long story. She comments again and says, will you take $75 plus shipping? So I just said, if you're ready to buy, please use the offer button and make an offer. Because at this point, I wasn't really sure if she was even serious because she hadn't make, made any valid offers. It was only through comments. So anyways, she did make the $75 offer. I accepted it. I had paid a dollar for this at an estate sale. So that made my profit $59. I think that's really great. Um, I have, I do have a couple other sets like this in different colors that have been listed for quite some time and have not gotten much interest or offers. So I'm just telling you that 
so that you don't rush out and pay up for this type of item because it may take some time to sell and it may not sell for this high of a price. Okay, and when I am listing vintage items, I always like to put the era that I think it's from, so 50s or 1950s. I did use Mrs. Maisel as a keyword for that vintage re retro pinup. Uh, as many things as I could think of. So the next item is a vintage Columbia jacket. I think this is from the 1980s. And I don't know if you can see, but it does have some fading here. So I like picking up these vintage kind of color block, vibrant colored ski winter coats. This is kind of more of a shell. I listed this for, I can't remember, $49 or $59. And the buyer offered me $45. This had only been listed for under a month. I'm not exactly sure how long. Uh, but I decided to go ahead and accept that because it did have that little bit of fading on there. I had paid $3 for this at a small town thrift store. I actually, that day, I got quite a few really great vintage kind of 80s winter jackets. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $33. I think that's pretty great. Sometimes people, I think people will pass these up because not everyone looks at vintage as items from the 1980s or 90s, but that era is trending right now. So I pick it up and you can sometimes find it at thrift stores for a little bit less expensive uh, because they don't see it as true vintage. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay. So the next item that sold is this Tory Burch cashmere sweater. Has kind of a boat neck nautical French style. And this is a, a few years old. This is an older tag from Tory Burch. I had picked this up at an estate sale and I did already lint roll this, but it looks like it's picked up some fuzz. So I picked it up at an estate sale and they had a ton of cashmere sweaters there. They had a ton of St. John pieces and the sweaters were a dollar and the items in the closet, which is where the St. John pieces were, were $2. And this woman liked to shop. So I got a ton of cashmere sweaters and St. John pieces. Now this had been listed a while, maybe close to a year. So I think I just had it listed too high. I can't remember what I had it listed at, but I had reduced the price. This buyer offered me $35. I eagerly accepted that because I was ready to move this out because it had been listed so long. Like I said, I paid a dollar for it. So that made my profit $24.32. Hmm, I'm wondering if this is an offer if I sent out maybe then because it has that 32 cents. Maybe it was with discounted shipping. But anyways, that's what my profit was. And the next item is another item that had been listed for a little while, and I'm kind of surprised that it sold right now. It is this linen tunic shirt by Bryn Walker. Now this uh, brand has a pretty decent retail and it's really nice quality. I had seen other YouTube resellers talk about this brand and that's one of the reasons I picked it up. But I listed this early in the summer and it's just now selling. Again, I, maybe I had it listed too high. I'm not sure. 
I can't remember what I started out listing it at, but it ended up selling for $46. So I'm, I'm happy with that, even though it took a little while to sell. I did pay $5 for this at the Goodwill. So after posh fees and my cost of goods, that made my profit $29.12. I do think that how much you can get for an item can sometimes be based on the other items in your closet. So you know what I mean? Like the overall vibe of your closet. So if you guys watch Mackenzie from McThriftsy, I love her videos. Actually, she is who inspired me to do these ship with me videos. But you'll see that she picks up a lot of you know, boho, beachy, natural fabric pieces. So I think maybe if she had had this listed, it would have sold quicker because her customers know to go to her closet for this type of item. Whereas my customers maybe are more used to coming to my closet for vintage items or jewelry. And um, yeah, I don't know. It just seems like the vibe of your closet can dictate or your store can dictate uh, how much you get for an item. I could be off with that, but that's just that's just what I think. So did I say my profit was $29.12? So that is the last item for this week. All in all, I'm happy with that. I uh, moved out quite a few items. I had some really great profits and great sales. So yeah, that's great. Uh, thank you so much for watching. If you are enjoying my videos, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button. If you ring the bell, it'll turn on notifications. So YouTube will let you know when I upload new videos. Uh, if you haven't watched my other videos, I have playlists for my ship with me videos and my adventure videos. And I have a few more videos coming out. Um, Actually, this will be after them, but I have some new Thrift With Me and Adventure videos. So uh, be sure to check those out. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Both those things really help me out. All right. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.